Okay, hi. Today, our topic is the thrill of the hunt. Okay, so every week here at Antique Hubbard, we get in thousands of pieces of sterling flatware. On some weeks, we'll actually get in 10,000 pieces of silver. And there's nice things coming in. You know, there's Jensen, there's Bouchelotti, there's Tiffany, there's Hollowware, there's popular patterns, there's many, many things. But one thing we don't get lots of, and that's museum quality silver. That's the part that is the fun part, and it's the hard part for us to get. So, where does this kind of silver come from? It comes from collections. And about two years ago, I was thrilled because four major collectors decided to sell me their collections. And, you know, we found other people who would be happy to have parts of the collection and we basically recycled it. Okay, so, but last year, it was not that way. I really hunted hard for great collections. I talked to people and during the entire year, I got one good, not great collection. So, so anyway, this year I was hoping again that we would get a number of collections and it's been a banner year. Normally for these collections, they don't come to the shop. We have to go to see them. And so this year we've made two trips to New York to see collections. We've gone to Texas three times. We've gone to Massachusetts twice. We went to Chicago once. And we went to the Detroit area last week. Okay, and um, so how does this process work? So a person will contact us that they're interested in selling their collection. We will see what's in the collection, either by them writing to us or uh, sending us pictures. We'll make a general offer for either part or all of the collection. And then if they agree, then we will, you know, uh, go and buy the collection. We'll either drive it back or we will um, ship it. Okay, it's sometimes a very long period too and it's not always successful. So one of my more recent ones was someone in Chicago called and people come to the shop literally every other day from Chicago to, um, selling a silver. But this person had two nice sets and then they had a lot of hollowware and he said I can't possibly get this all in my car and and so we we said well what do you have and he said I'll take a picture he took a picture of his dining room and it was just solid silver so I said okay he had agreed to the prices that I had for the two sets and they were very nice sets and so I was like well at least we're gonna get the sets and you know we'll probably buy the hollowware too and we got down there, and I spent about a half a day pricing things. I gave him a, a very fair price on things. And then at the very end, he said, well, my brother-in-law is with an auction company, and my wife and I talked it over, and there'd never be peace in the family if I didn't give him a chance at it. Well, so we didn't get the sets. We didn't get the hollowware. He still says on his most recent correspondence to me, there's a 99% chance we're going to get it. Well, I've seen a lot of those 99% things that, that don't happen. So there we you know, spent some time, we did some traveling, and it didn't work out. Sometimes these take a great deal of time. So one of our recent trips out east, you know, talking, emailing, you know, pricing, it took about four months to come up with, you know, a price and a manner of paying him and, a, and what he wanted to sell to actually make the, the transaction work. And then I bought a lot more things from him when I got there. So it worked out very well. Another one um, in New York this year, you know, we, you know, corresponded for several months. And he always said, it wasn't enough and so I was ready to go on vacation and I said I'd really like to 
finishing the negotiations by the time I leave. And I said, I've given you six different prices and offers. In every case, you say no. So how about giving me the price that you'd feel comfortable with? And he did. And it was just slightly above my last offer. I was happy that we were able to make a deal and I got some museum quality silver from that. My last one was last week. And nine months ago, a person had a very good collection of silver and I made him an offer for it. And he said the time wasn't right. And so we've contacted him a few times since then. And about 10 days ago, he said the time was right. When could we come? So with an employee, we drove 800 miles there and back and met with the person and got a really great collection of figural silver. And I'll show you a little bit of that. So the first piece is this Tiffany Indian bonbon spoon in this fitted from Paris Palomino case. It's a beautiful piece of Tiffany silver from the 1880s. It has all bright cutting on the back and then gold actually applied to the back. Great little piece. Here's one of my favorites. It's a paper knife done by Schiebler. It's got crabs, shells, and seaweed on the solid handle made from the 1880s. This person was really into figural pieces. Here's another one. So this is the pattern Heisen, 1880s. It has a big catfish on the blade. It has a turtle on the blade. It has a fish swimming up the handle. It's close to museum quality. Okay. As I say, he liked figural. Another thing he liked was mixed metals. So here's a Gorham sugar and creamer. It's got a copper bird. It's got a gold butterfly. It has copper oriental figures on it from around the 1880s also. Here's a sort of ordinary spoon, but it's kind of cool. It's by Schiebler, and again, it has a gold, I guess it's a, a seahorse, and then it's got a gold bug, and it's got copper-like leaves and branches, and it's dated 1889. Again, with a figural, here is a terrapin bowl. So it's got all turtles going around the sea and with seaweed, and it's got a little square box on the back. So it was by Gorham and it was custom. And finally, there's this water pitcher. I really like this a lot. So it's got bright cut things on it. And then they did gold washing. So here's a bird and it's got gold wings, yellow gold. Then it has rose gold body and it has green gold head. Um, and then they did the same thing with the leaves and branches. They did the same thing with the dragonfly there. Uh, this is by Dominic and Hoff. Dominic Hoff dated it in 1879. And then it was given at this horse race in 1881. So this collection had more than 100 fine items. Some, some of the 100 items were like sets of cocktail forks or sets of knives. So it was quite a big group, all the very finest in American silver. And as I say, the thrill of the hunt is what I really enjoy and I hope to have many more this year. Thanks.